everyone and you're very welcome for uh, the participation in today's webinar. My name is Helen. If you don't know me, I am head teacher here at Los Angeles English School and today our lesson is going to be dedicated to TOEFL. So if you are preparing for your TOEFL exam, it's going to be interesting for you. So if you are not going to pass TOEFL, I'm not sure that it's going to be very interesting to you, um, so that's why you can check our schedule for all our upcoming webinars uh, on this YouTube channel on the banner. But anyways, if you're not going to take TOEFL, but you're still interested, of course, you can take part in this webinar. So, and uh, also, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and also uh, hit the notification button so that you will be able to get all our notifications on our upcoming webinars and new videos. All right, so guys, let's get started. So, and today we're going to look through all the steps of this integrated essay. So uh, if you are already preparing for the IELTS, probably you know that we there are two writing tasks. The first one is integrated essay and the second one is independent essay. So today we're fo focusing on integrated essay and here you can see the description to the, this task. So this task combines a reading passage and a listening passage. So first you will read the text and then you will listen to the audio on an academic topic, followed by a question to which you will type a response. So first you will be given three minutes to read a short text. So on the screen, um, the text will appear. It's not a big text, so three minutes to read it. Then this text will disappear and you will hear it's going to be a short lecture about two minutes long on the same topic. But this lecture, this audio, will treat this reading passage in a little bit different way. So, And there are different options. It may contradict or argue against points made in the reading or may support the information with additional examples or explanations. So, uh, but usually uh, this uh, lecture contradicts the points made, made in the reading. It's the most common uh, thing that happens during TOEFL. So be ready to listen to the lecture and the lecturer or will run against the ideas in the reading. So when the lecture is finished, so you listen to the lecture, it's over, the reading passage again will appear on the screen uh, and you will see the question about the lecture and the, the reading. And the screen then will split in half uh, and you will see the reading on the left and there will be some space for you to type your response on the right. And you will be given 20 minutes to type and check your response. So here you cannot choose uh, how long you're going to be writing this task. So you will be limited in terms of time. So make sure that you do everything in 20 minutes. So 20 minutes to type your response and also to um, check it. So it's important that you have some time to check it uh, because if we type very quickly, of course, we tend to make mistakes. So make sure that there is some time left. Also, guys, you will hear the um, uh, audio only once and then it will disappear. But the text, yeah, will appear again. So it's highly recommended that you take 
notes both on reading and uh, listening, but since listening will disappear forever from your sight or from your ears, then make sure that you take really good notes on your listening. All right, so the next. So here you can see the sample text that appears for three minutes and um, you should be able to read it quickly and to understand the, the idea. Usually in this uh, text there will be key points or some major points that you need to take notes on. And now we're going to read this text together so that you will understand what I mean. So this is a sample text that you will see first. So the old adage, drink eight glasses of water a day, may not in fact be true, in spite of being long recommended as a sound healthful practice for just about every adult, with the understanding that certain types of people, such as athletes and those who spend time outdoors in hot climates, need, uh, might need to take in even more water. Interestingly, the original source of this advice is not known. It may have started as folklore or the original medical study that came to this conclusion may somehow have been lost or forgotten. But the phrase 8 of 8, where one glass of water 8 ounces, lives on. What is certain, however, is that many Americans are chronically dehydrated. An average adult loses about 10 glasses of water a day but then the equivalent of about four glasses of water are gained each day through the fluids found in food. Therefore, the actual shortage that the person must make up each day is closer to six glasses. Furthermore, overconsumption of beverages containing caffeine, such as coffee, tea, and sodas, leads to loss of water. Exercising can cause a further loss of water through sweat. Dehydration, in turn, leads to poor skin tone, weak muscles, and even weight gain. Yeah, so this, you can see that the text is on an academic topic, but it's easy to understand. So it's, uh, you don't um, need any special knowledge on the topic. So while reading uh, this uh, text, as I said before, make sure that you, you will be giving some sheets of paper uh, and a pen or a pencil to write during the exam. So you will be given to take some, um, the opportunity to take notes for yourself. Make sure that you don't rewrite the whole text, just read it, try to understand the general idea and write only key points very quickly because you will see this text again. So, and also try to understand the uh, overall opinion of the author. So, what is the main view? So, here we can see that this adage, um, drink eight glasses of water a day here. Can you please think first, the author of this text, text does the author agree? or disagree with this adage. So based on this text, what do you think, guys? Type your answers in the chat box, please. So Victoria says, I think he rather disagrees. Are you sure? <laughs> like, we can uh, see that the author partly agrees. So yeah, like, it's uh, not a fact, yeah? There is uh, no fact. And here we have the first main point. The original source of this advice is not known. Yeah, so the author thinks that it's actually not proven. But uh, it seems like the, the um, text, yeah, the main idea of this passage is, yeah, we don't know the source, but we can see that Americans are chronically dehydrated. Like, it's kind of, we have the idea that it's still important to drink a lot of water. So, and the author thinks it's important to drink closer to six glasses of water. So the second main point is that Americans are chronically dehydrated. 
this is the next key idea of the reading passage. So the second key idea here that we need to underline, what do you think is this? So the second point here is overconsumption of beverages containing caffeine, such as coffee, tea, and sodas, leads to loss of water. So this is the next uh, point that is made in the passage. And we have one more idea here that is important. Which do you think this idea is? And here you can see the next main point. Dehydration, in turn, leads to poor skin tone, weak muscles, and even weight gain. So here we have uh, main points that we need to bear in mind and that we need to take, uh, take notes on. So the passage claims that original source of this adage that you need to drink eight glasses of water a day is not known. So it's not... Uh, scientific uh, proof then americans are chronically dehydrated overconsumption of beverages containing caffeine leads to loss of water and dehydration in turns leads to different health problems so these are key points usually just you need to know that usually there are three or four main points in the passage maximum four so you will usually need to uh find four up to four main statements all right so after that this text disappears and you will hear the audio on the same topic but as i said before this audio this lecture We'll treat this passage in, in a little bit different way. So the lecturer will whether agree with this reading passage, uh, but it uh, happens very seldom. Usually the lecturer will contradict the passage. So we'll disagree or we'll refute the passage. What I'd like you to do now, now guys, so listen to this lecture on the same topic and what you need to do is you need to take notes, get ready, take a sheet of paper, a pen or a pencil for you. And uh, we underlined key points in the reading. Let me go back to them. So here you can see these key points. And what will the lecture say on these key points? How the lecturer uh, will contradict or agree with these points. So get ready. All right, so here we go. Let's listen and take notes. Now listen to part of a lecture on the same topic. Now you'll find when you're out in the field in practice teaching health, you'll find that you're battling misconceptions as much as lack of knowledge. In fact, lack of knowledge is easier to solve because at least people know that they don't know something. But when people believe something that isn't true, your job's going to be a lot harder. Let's take an example, that popular myth about needing eight glasses of water a day. Sometimes I even hear eight to 10 glasses a day. This has no basis in reality. Let me repeat that. It's not a fact. I don't care how many times your parents told you this or how many emails you received warning you that Americans are dehydrated. It's simply not true. There is no medical evidence, no studies done, showing that Americans have a problem with hydration. If you eat and drink normally and you're not heavily exercising or out in the hot sun, you're probably getting all the water you need. Oh, and all that coffee and tea? That counts. Forget what you might have heard about caffeinated drinks dehydrating you. Again, no medical evidence to back that up. A cup of soda gives you just as much fluid as a cup of water. 
It might not be good for you with all that sugar, but it's not dehydrating you. In fact, it's possible to drink too much water, which can lead to medical problems as bad as those caused by dehydration. The best medical advice you can give the average person is drink when you're thirsty. Listen to your body. All right, guys, so how did you do? I hope that you have noted some ideas. And now let's check what you've done. So here is this lecture. So this is the transcript, but you won't see it during your exam. Just be careful about that. So here is what the lecturer said. And if you remember, the first point from the reading passage was that this adage that you have to drink six, uh, about eight, sorry, glasses of water a day. Um, so there is no fact, it's not a fact, there is no scientific evidence. What about the lecturer? So what did the professor say on that? So what are your answers? So the professor thinks the same or refutes this statement? So guys, here we can see that this has no basis in reality. So with the first point from the reading passage, this professor agrees. So she also says that this has no basis in reality. What does he, she, sorry, think about dehydration? So the statement that Americans are dehydrated. Yeah, she gave some counter arguments. Exactly, Victoria. Yeah, so here we have uh, the statement, uh, Americans are dehydrated. It's simply not true. Yeah, so she disagrees with the statement made in the reading passage. Then we can see the second point. Uh, it was about uh, drinking beverages that contain caffeine. So what did she say on that? So does she agree with the text or no? So I, I am reminding you that the passage uh, claimed that uh, if you drink uh, beverages containing caffeine, you will be more dehydrated. Yeah, so it is not proved medically. Yeah, exactly. So here she says, forget what you might have heard about caffeinated drinks dehydrating you. So again, she refutes this statement. And also the last uh, point, it's about medical problems. So in the passage, there was a statement that if you are dehydrated, uh, it may lead to different health issues. So what about the lecturer? So I see some answers, caffeinated beverages don't dehydrate. Yeah, exactly, Victoria. So in the last point is, in fact, it's possible to drink too much water, which can lead to medical problems as bad as those caused by dehydration. So we can see that the professor uh, claims that, uh, yeah, it may be um, harmful to drink too much water. So you need to be careful um, about how much water you drink and it can be too much. Okay, so then what you have to do is uh, you need to analyze the passage 
and uh, the lecture and you need to write down the connection between them and uh, what the lecturer said on the points made in the reading. So you need to integrate those ideas. Okay, now let's take a look at our plan for the integrated essay. So first you need to write uh, the introduction. So it's one or two sentences that explain the topic and the main relationship between the lecture and the reading. So the lecture and the reading passage both discuss and you state the topic. While the passage asserts that the lecture expresses a different point of view by saying that. And here you can insert the information that you need. So it's not necessary. Um, so it's not nece necessarily the information from our specific example. It's like a template for you that you can use for any answer. Only in case uh, the uh, reading passage um, contradicts the lecture. So then we need to write down our body. And in our body, we need also to have uh, different paragraphs. And the first one is lecture's first point and how it relates to the reading. So first of all, the lecturer thinks that or maybe doesn't think that, whereas it is stated in the reading passage that, furthermore, the professor or the teacher, the doctor, then you have the second paragraph and it's lecture's second point and how it relates to the reading. Secondly, the lecturer casts doubt on the claim presented in the text that the lecturer counters this point by saying that, and here um, pay attention to different synonyms that you uh, should use because you have to try and avoid repetition and these are really good words to use. And your last body paragraph lecture's third point and how it relates to the reading. Lastly, or finally, the lecturer refutes the claim that explaining that. So here is the plan and if it's template, you can use it for the integrated essay. Just um, insert here the information uh, that you need based on the text and the lecture that you will hear. And now we will take a look at the example. So this is our answer uh, based on the reading passage and the lecture that we've read and heard with you today. So, introduction. The lecture and the reading passage both discuss if it is necessary to drink eight glasses of water. Both the lecture, lecturer and the author of the text point out that there is no scientific research to prove that drinking that much water a day is vital or helpful. Neither the lecturer nor the author of the article knew the source of this common myth. However, the professor challenges the second claim in the reading about dehydration. First of all, the professor contradicts the claim in the passage that many Americans are dehydrated. Instead, she argues that most people get all the water they need from drinking normally and eating food. Furthermore, the lecturer casts doubt on the view that drinking coffee and tea don't help hydrate the body by pointing out that ca uh, caffeinated beverages would harm your uh, health, but they are not dehydrating you. Finally, it is argued in the lecture that drinking too much water can lead to severe health problems and may be as dangerous as dehydration. The lecturer concludes by recommending that people drink when they feel thirsty. So this is a perfect answer. So again, just use the template from this uh, webinar. Uh, make sure that you type your response uh, in 20 minutes. And also, um, 
you can do, for example, first you think about the plan and you can do it on a sheet of paper, but uh, I would recommend typing not step by step, but for example, you can uh, type a little plan just while uh, writing, uh, while typing, I mean, while uh, writing the response on the computer. And maybe if uh, you don't have any more time, uh, the examiner will see that you had a plan. Uh, maybe you will not finish it, but it's better that you have a plan written already uh, on the screen. So, I mean, in the computer. Okay, and now let's practice. So, guys, here you have a text. And I give you three minutes. And I'd like you to read this text and read it to yourself. Then it will disappear. Uh, prepare some uh, paper and a pen for you and be ready to take notes on the main points of the text. So, ready? All right, so you have three minutes. Read the passage and take notes on the main points. All right, so your time is over, and now you will hear the lecture on the same topic, and now you need to take very good notes because you will hear this audio only once, so let's listen to this. People say that milk is hugely beneficial for us as far as it is consumed as part of a balanced diet. But we should be aware of some negative side effects of milk intake. First, milk consumption may cause calcium loss. When we have difficulty digesting milk, our body draws calcium out of the bones to neutralize the acid in the stomach. Therefore, milk intake may contribute to developing osteoporosis instead of preventing it. In addition, milk protein is a common cause of food allergies. A milk allergy occurs when our immune system reacts against the protein contained in milk. Finally, milk is fattening. According to recent studies, children who drank more than three servings of milk per day gained considerable weight, whether they drank whole or skim milk. So be careful not to take more than the recommended amount on a daily basis. All right. So, guys, that brings us to the... Uh 
actual writing task. So now uh, take 20 minutes and based on your notes, write down your response. So practice it. So uh, summarize the points made in the reading, compare them to the points made in the lecture, and you actually can type your response in the comments below the replay to this webinar. So I'm not going to check um, it very accurately. I will just um, skim it and I will try to give you a score, but without correcting your mistakes. However, if you'd like to use our correction service, you can visit our website losangelesenglishschool.com and check information about our essay correction service and you can send us your work and you'll get a complete essay correction with all descriptions and uh, recommendations. All right, so, so this brings us to the end of our lesson. And thank you very much for joining me today. I'm very sorry for some technical problems that we had if you watched the beginning of this webinar. Um, so this is the end of the lesson. Thank you again very much for being with you with me. I am waiting for your responses. Don't forget to leave them in the comments below the video. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the uh, bell icon so that you will be notified of all upcoming webinars and new videos. I wish you have a fantastic day and bye!